December 7, 2023, I went into what is known as the world's most bizarre prison. San Pedro Prison Center in La Paz, Bolivia, is a detention center run by the inmates themselves. There are no bars inside the cells, there are no cameras recording, there are no policemen inside the jail. This detention center was built to house only 300 inmates, but it currently has over 3,000 of them living together in terrible conditions. The reason I went in was to visit my dear friend and political prisoner, Cesar Apasa, an indigenous union leader that was arrested under false charges in September of 2022. Cesar's growing leadership and his continuous and public defense of Bolivia's constitution made him a threat to the regime, who arrested him without due process. While in prison, he was tortured repeatedly to the point where he had a stroke and half of his body became paralyzed. Once I entered San Pedro, I had to pay a prisoner to walk me in and take me to the place where Cesar was. I even had to bend down and go under the bed of his cellmate so I could reach the place where Cesar was and talk to him. Cesar told me of the weekly torture to which he was subject as government agents wanted him to accept his guilt in exchange of sending him to house arrest where he could get medical attention. We had an even bigger concern, however, the diabetes that he developed while in prison was getting worse. And despite being on the border of a coma, the government kept refusing medical help for him. Cesar made me memorize phrases so I could tell them to the press. Please save my life. I am innocent and I don't want to leave this prison in a coffin. Once I came out of San Pedro, I talked to Bolivian press and passed on his message. As a consequence, I was followed by an intelligence agent who I confronted in front of the press. He claimed to be a journalist and gave me a fake name for himself and for the radio that he claimed to work with. All of this information was proven as false by Bolivia's Journalists Association. This story may sound extraordinary, but it is the reality for more than 300 people in my country who are either political prisoners or are followed and consistently threatened by the regime, they're politically persecuted for political reasons. People like former President Yanine Añez, Governor Luis Fernando Camacho, indigenous leader Marco Pumari, among many others, are detained, are detained arbitrarily and often denied healthcare to make this a form of torture. What is even worse is that unlike other dictatorships in the region, the Bolivian government is facing no consequences for their actions, no international sanctions and no political reaction for the international community. Let me be clear, the Bolivian government is executing human rights abuses with complete impunity. This may sound like a problem for Bolivians only, but it's a problem for the entire hemisphere. See, dictatorships support each other, authoritarianism spreads, and it doesn't even need to be at the border of your country to come in, and we know that. Since 2006 until now, the Bolivian government has gotten more and more authoritarian, thanks to the support that it receives from larger dictatorships like Iran, China, and Russia. The same month that I visited Cesar, the Bolivian government signed an agreement with Putin's regime to exploit lithium in our mountains. At the same time, Xi Jinping's dictatorship is the biggest bilateral creditor to Bolivia and the main driver of environmental destruction. Finally, Iran has signed a deal with Bolivia on military cooperation that they have kept secret. It seems to involve the import of Iranian weapons into Bolivian soil. Experts have called my country Iran's most successful foreign policy project in Latin America. Again, I want to be very clear. Bolivia's growing authoritarianism also means Iranian, Chinese, and Russian presence and operations with complete impunity in the center of South America. A month after my visit, Cesar was sent to house arrest. Because he knew that Bolivians were aware that he was being tortured and that he was innocent, he signed a plea guilt and was sent home where he's getting medical care. He remains until today one of the bravest and strongest persons I know. And today, I want to ask you to be as brave as he is and help us defend democracy in Bolivia. One of the reasons the regime gets away with this is because no one is reporting on the political persecution in my country. So I ask, and please let me know, how many journalists are in this room? I'd like to see some hands up if we have any of them. We are looking to have at least five new media articles about political prisoners in Bolivia written within the next month. Please come and find me after this talk. I'd love to connect with you. 
Our response to authoritarianism in the Americas cannot be impunity. Protecting democracy in Bolivia is also preserving democracy in the entire hemisphere and in the whole world. Be as brave as Cesaris and help us defend it. Thank you.